What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today we are continuing with the episodes of the recreation of Arc 2. Uh, today I'm going to overview my blueprints for the building system. So again, it's going to be a quick overview, so uh, let's get started. Alright, so let's go into my build system folder here and I have a few things. So the first thing that I have is of course my structure for the build pools. And basically, I, in here I just have a um, set of mesh... Um, uh basically field okay so i can place my mesh so for example it's a wooden floor a wooden uh wall a wooden uh window whatever it is right then i have the trace channel basically we just make sure later on when i do the traces for the placement that i can detect sockets so i can automatically snap them into my uh, buildings for example if i have a foundation i can have a socket with a specific tree channel so when i detect it it will go ahead and snap the wall into the edge of the foundation you get the idea then we have the actor itself i'm gonna show them in a second and then the locks cost as you can see in my art recreation i made it so that um it's more of uh, the forest style where you place the blueprint first first and then slowly put the locks on and then i just have a stone mesh because uh if you want to upgrade them right from wood to stone or whatever and with that said, and here I have the database where I just filled all of that um, fields with their according thing. For example, I have the foundation here, has the mesh foundation, the trace channel, the actor, the relax cost, the third mesh, the same with the floor, and so on, campfire, whatever I have, right? Uh, all right, so now, yes, let's go and start really with the logic itself. So the first thing that we have is the BPC build, and it's basically the um, build uh, component so if i go into the uh, van graph um this doesn't really get anything crazy first of all i just save reference to my camera so i can do the line trace from my camera i will show you in a second and then i just basically just get the row names for the whole database and then save it in the build so basically i just have all the data from the database that i just showed you and then don't worry about the build delay or whatever this is just the loop of the build update which is not uh, making it in the event take, it's just making it a bit uh, more, you know, I guess, performance. And and then also we have the launch build mode, uh, basically just enabling or disabling the build, <laughs> the build system. Um, so in the build update, it's pretty straightforward. We just have the line trace, which comes from the grammar position and to forward. And then I can just get the trace channel from the Buildables and I will have a build ID. So basically, the build ID is just the current build that you're selecting in order to build. And um, this is just done and selected from the first person camera. So I don't worry about that. But basically, um, it will just detect if there's any collision, of course, get the impact point and pass it into this transform location where I save that point where I want to display uh, the build in order to build. And I have other things as getting the hit actor component for maybe sockets in the future. And then I'm doing if it's a hot gloss build or not, uh, detecting the build sockets, and so on. Basically, you get a idea setting the color if I basically can build or not. So you can see it's green or not, and so on. This just makes the loop over here. You get the idea. Um, so really, where we go into the spawn build gauss, uh, you get the idea where I basically just add a tile mesh component into the player reference with that build transform that I've just done in the build update. And then you get the gauss build to be set and the mesh from the database uh, buildables and then the collision to no collision so i can kind of just place it and basically with that you get this result as i press b you can see i can cycle through them i mean the cycling is, is done externally in the first person camera but you get this where you can place them wherever the line trace is is basically given and then also if there's any object it goes red so you cannot build it. So that's basically that. And of course, you have then this spawn build where you basically uh, will just pass that transform, spawn the actor, and then set the mesh, the build cost, and then the stone mesh from the database and so on. And you get the idea, right? Um, so for that, we also have the check for overlap, which is the one that will check for if we can place it or not. So for example, it will do a box trace, but I can just show you real quick for duration. Uh, which is a bit smaller you can see it's still in this box trace and basically if it's something in the way it will overlap it and not be able to build 
you get the idea, right? It's a bit smaller in order to give a bit of freedom for the player and be able to squeeze it in tiny corners, but this is entirely to you to customize and so on. You know, you get the idea. So I still it that way. Um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, you have, for example, they can build color, things like that. Um, but I will not really go in depth in them. Of course, we have the variables that I've been showing and so on. So now we can go into the next thing, which is actually in the buildables, we have the buildable actors, right? The ones that will spawn. And basically we have the master, which is the parent. And all these ones are childs from this one. So all the main logic is inside the master. And these ones are just childs with, you know, changing the, the, well, the mesh itself, the buildable itself and the sockets. So if we go into the master, First of all, we have a few things as initialization of the stone mesh and the cost for the logs and so on. And then I'm basically going ahead and getting the static mesh and saving the materials. Of course, in here, I don't have a, a, a simple cube, but in the other ones, I have the actual mesh. So I'm just saving the, um, the materials because later on, when I, when I go uh, and get rid of the ghost, because look, if I right now go ahead and build, Let's me there we go and place it here. It basically is setting the materials to be this transparent one. So basically it's losing the original uh, material. So I'm just basically going ahead and saving them. Why is this lagging so much <laughs> in a uh, variable? Uh, so basically I can put it back when all the logs have been placed. And then of course tags and so on, all these things. And then we have the interaction when you basically go with the player and from the player's uh, a blueprint, I call this event where you interact with it and it will just make sure that you have more than one log equipment in your hand. And if so, it will go ahead and basically do this where it will just remove the log from your hand. Okay, so I'll go in log controller in a second, but then of course add the log into the, um, into the log list in the build itself and play a sound, all this stuff. And then we have the finished build and we just set the material back to normal from that one as, as a materials list that I mentioned before. Play a sound, put the uh, collisions back on. You get the idea. This is just for the widgets. So this will just be always looking at you and the, the uh, amount of logs that you have left. Yeah, you get the idea, all this stuff. And we have just the finished build. This is what we just call the multicast. So it's uh, multiplayer replicated and work with multiple clients in a multiplayer game and some interfaces, for example, a great build and the interact build, as I already showed all this stuff. And then also we have the return sockets, where we just look through all the box collisions and then return them into a nice variable so we can use them. So let's go into a specific uh, build, for example, the floor, and you see what it will have. So in the viewport, you can see that it has a lot of things now. Relax. Uh, this really because of my lack of organization, okay? But you can see that the mesh has been replaced with the actual uh, wooden mesh. And then we have the sockets. So these sockets are used basically triggers, box gliders, putting in the places that we want to snap. For example, if I go and start hovering uh, over this part in order to build, it will detect this trigger and it will snap my floor in here. So it's nice and organized, like in also about games, right? We have the sockets. And then in the logs, well, I just have a list of the logs here, which are hidden. So for that to put it visible, you can see here, uh, enable and disabling. And basically they're just disabled, the start, whatever, but they will be uh, enabled as I interact with this and basically enable them. And uh, you get the idea, basically that. And of course it doesn't really have any logic. So you can see just calls the parent begin play because it doesn't have any logic. All it is in the master. And then return sockets, it just, well, it doesn't really change anything. And so with that said, that's pretty much it. In terms of that, uh, we can see also maybe the walls, you can see the same thing. All right, just have the mesh, the logs, and the sockets. In this case, it will be for the floors up here. And with that, you basically get the result of being able to, you know, put a, a socket here, then go into a log, get it, and put it in, in here. As you can see and slowly build it and i don't know why <laughs> the second log didn't appear but um you get it yeah of course i have my chopping tree system where i showcase in the last and uh, tutorial well tutorial overview and i don't know why it's lagging so much right now sorry about that but god okay you go now and basically it will be filling up all the logs 
that he needs, of course. This you can equip two. You can see uh, four out of eleven logs and put them here, as you can see. And when you put all all the logs, of course, um, yeah, it will be there, and the construction will be finalized, as I just uh, showed. Um, so let's quickly go into the player blueprint. So here, and let me show. Look at this awfulness code yeah look at my spaghetti code because this is, is a challenge of a recreation if a couple of hours so i have to improvise in my ways you know <laughs> not the most organized thing um so really you can see for example to begin the logs basically if uh, you're not in build mode and so on you will add the log into your component which i will show in you in a second but then also you can go ahead and interact where you will add the log into it and you call this one this uh, interact build as it showed here and you can see so it's adding the lock from the player through his line traces and stuff that's it and of course dominate through an rpc so it will replicate in all clients and multiplayer that's basically what is happening here again very bad organized <laughs> um but this was just mainly a couple of hours so i had to improvise on that stuff uh, real quick and, and in terms of that let's go into the and um, build component Sorry, the big component, not this one that I showed, but the um, build Lux controller. Basically, the Lux controller is just the controller of equipping Nuts and Crash, the Lux in your hand, okay? That is the Lux controller. Um, so you can see we have just two simple custom events, and then we have two simple, well, three simple variables. First of all, we have the current Lux, just a number, an integer. And then we have the max logs that you can hold. And then we have the logs, basically a um, here a reference. So here is basically a piece of build. So I can drag them and put in these two logs in the camera. Okay. Basically, you set these two logs here, which are disabled, into there. So it knows which one to enable. As you can see, if it's uh, if the current logs is less than the max logs that we are allowed, it will add one to the current logs. I will sprint to the bug grip and then I will basically go ahead and enable that amount of lugs in the in the player. And it's simply remove but invert. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> Alright, and uh, I'm just basically doing that to of course in the and uh, where I pick it up from the floor, I'm adding it into the lug uh, from there. And that's pretty much it. There's of course more in left stuff, but uh, this you know this is just a quick overview. Um, I think that's pretty much uh, what you get. You just get an idea of the build system, uh, how you can do, use these things, and I really recommend using and um, databases and so on to make these things because it just makes so things much easier. Like literally, uh, to add a new build, you can just press the add button and then just change the variables that I need, and then just go ahead and make a new buildable. Uh, one here, literally just duplicate it, and inside you change the mesh and the sockets and, and the lugs, and that's it. Like it's super fast compared to other systems I have made in the past. So this is really effective, and you know you can do a lot of stuff. Um, and of course, maybe for example, in the door you want some logic. In this case, I don't have any logic, but you get the idea. You can have logic into. I mean, they're actor blueprints, so you can do a lot of stuff with it. It's very versatile, and of course. You can use interfaces to make the calls and not directly cast into each actor and all this stuff, you know, you get the idea. I uh, totally recommend all these things. Oh, so that's pretty much it, guys. If you found this tutorial helpful, I would really appreciate you like the video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I have lots of ongoing tutorials and videos, so if you want to come out, go ahead. And um, I will leave my R2 recreation video and the other chopping trees uh, tutorial that I made in the description. In this case, you want to check them out. Now, just go well, I said bye bye.